studio here. I did get to set up the lighting. I'm at my house right now so I got my dogs all looking at me, my cat looking at me, what's going on. I've been moving forward very very quickly with this carbon fiber Kevlar build and before we actually get to the build where I'm doing it I wanted to go over a couple more things with you guys. I want to make sure you're prepped. So anyway I wanted to see if you guys could follow along here with me and I'll talk about a few things you can go over all the videos the, the before the build videos and you can get yourself ready and acquainted with the tools you're going to be using what you're going to need so I take the, the guesswork out of that you know planning to do this project alright so first of all the core now I do have a wooden core. I am working on a wooden core project. This is that deck. This will get turned into an electric skateboard. This is just about prepped and ready. Um, I just didn't want to do anything with this yet because this isn't the high quality handcrafted carbon fiber Kevlar board I'm going for. That wasn't it. But that will be part of the project. We're actually using some foam that they would use in aeronautics strong enough for airplanes and this is called the Venicel. it's a five pound vinyl foam closed cell so as is this is all closed cell now I have heated it and it does open the cells up and opening the cells up will allow for that resin to soak in soak into this core and give it that added stability that we're looking for. So that's going to be a little tip and that's going to be I think necessary for that uh, structure. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. I'll take my word for it. But and, and experience I know that this is going to work out pretty good. So here's the core and what I've gone ahead and done is I've shaped out a core. I just haven't cut my hole in the center yet. It's the only thing I haven't done, because what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut that hole there in the center. Then that piece that we cut out is actually gonna be used for the bottom part there. So, I've gone ahead and I shaped it all out. I put my concave in it. I put a couple extra dips in it here. Um, I didn't want to drop down board, but because of the concave, it does make it slightly drop down. So I think this is perfect. I think this is exactly what I was looking for. This here, um, it's not like we could really uh, uh, show you exactly how I do this. This is just craftsmanship. If you've seen surfboards being built, it's almost the same exact thing, except on a smaller scale. You're shaping with the rasp, getting your corners, all that good stuff. The only difference is you're gonna be heating this with the heat gun. Um, and bending it. It does not heat easily. You can see I, I did get some burn marks in it to try to get that bend in it. Um, as soon as it cools off it hardens again. It's not easy to work with. So uh, to get to the point where you can shape something like this up you might need a lot of practice uh, working with the material. I would definitely try practicing with the small pieces first seeing how it works before you go and you mess up a big blank because it's about 70 bucks for a sheet I can get three decks out of. So that's not cheap, all right? This is very expensive. Now, you guys already saw the carbon fiber we're gonna use for this build. It is a three by one mesh. It is a black and red. Actually, we're gonna use this side. When we actually make it, I'll show you how to fix things such as that where the twill's off a little bit. There's some runs in it. Um, a little tip before you work with the carbon fiber, even before you pick this stuff up. If you have any uh, dry skin on your hands, sometimes it catches these threads. Um, even the slightest bit, these are so fine, it, it'll catch it. Like three by one is very hard to keep the direction and keep the pattern, but it is possible. If you're new to this, you might just want to try a one by one, maybe something real dark. Uh, so like both... Uh, patterns are dark so you don't notice the pattern as much 
Um, a little tip before you work with it, get some real light sandpaper, like some 200. Just lightly hit your fingers with it. It'll take down any of those uh, spots that might catch this. Or wear gloves. You know, I don't know. But uh, that's our carbon fiber. I got two pieces cut to length that'll fit that deck and then I have two more pieces for the lid and speaking of the lid if you've ever taken your lid off your Evolve Carbon DT there's some foam padding that covers the hole on your side of the lid offers some insulation as well I have a whole roll of it we're going to be using that for the deck lids to secure that on we're going to be using an all-purpose spray adhesive so uh, I had that in the shop, I just went and grabbed it. Uh, these squeeze clamps, these squeeze clamps here, these are good to have when working, holding down your project. You're gonna want them. I showed you the Teflon coated uh, release film. When you wet out your carbon fiber, I like to use what I call patches, wet out patches. I lay the carbon fiber out, I wet it out, I lay it out on release film, and then underneath I put it in absorbent, so anything extra uh, that's not needed in that carbon fiber film is gonna go through the release film into the absorbent, and then I'll take this piece, and it'll be like a big Band-Aid patch, almost like pre-preg, and I'll lay it on what I'm gonna do. I'll show you, but you're gonna have to have some of this cheap stuff as well. Don't forget to have that, as long, as well as the Teflon coated to give you that real nice finish because that's what you're going to be using on the finish. Um, you saw the small paint brushes before, make sure you have these big ones depending on what size project. These bristles are perfect, they're nice and firm, it'll work that resin in and you can tuck it when you're done. Mixing cups, plenty of these, have plenty of these on hand. What I like to do is I like to take my two parts, I like to weigh them out, because the system I use, you weigh, you don't, you don't measure with the lines. So I like to weigh out each part, put it to the side with a lid on it when I'm ready, put it together. You don't shake it, because you're going to get air bubbles in it. No shaky, shaky. Stir, fold it, stir, 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 okay? And then strain it to help remove those air bubbles and get a nice flow. And then you can degas it as well if you want to. If you think that you messed up and there's going to be too much air bubbles in there or you created too much of a reaction, or you put too much of that graphene oxide in there, and, and, and you know, you're going to have to degas it. If you have a degassing chamber, I don't have one of them. So, there's what it is. What else we got? Oh, um, square with the 45 to keep things there to keep things straight I like to have one of these big T big T comes in handy this here is used for different structural parts when I'm building stuff it's nice to have this piece of foam in handy uh, modeling foam this might be about 10 bucks for this piece um, sandpaper Plenty of fresh razor blades. I keep mine in a knife. Tape measure. File. File will help shape that uh, core foam up the rasp to help shape that core foam. I cut it to close and then I rasp to the line. Then I finish it with sandpaper. So it's almost like working with wood. It's just a lot softer, like balsa wood almost. Honestly, if you ever work with balsa wood, um, plenty of sandpaper. Um, razor blades. I just want to make sure you guys are ready. I want to show you where I'm at in the process because today we may be wetting out some carbon fiber Kevlar. And before I get that far, I just have to make sure you guys are ready. I think that's about it for right now. Oh, and modeling clay. I have uh, like a hundred pounds of this air dry gray modeling clay. After three or four days, this will turn rock solid. Um, I like to, when I need to capture the shape of something and keep it for, to make a form out of or something, um, part of making silicone, uh, reproducing shapes out of silicone so I can make them later on, this modeling clay comes in handy. So, uh, like I said, I got a big old box of this stuff. I use it all the time. Very, very handy. Do all sorts of stuff with it. Make little, uh, whatever things but um, I think that's about it for right now 
Um, I guess when I set up my air pump, oh, um, I like to have epoxy adhesive as well. Called epoxy paste, epoxy adhesive, some, what's that stuff, PB11? But I like to have that on hand. You can fill voids with that if needed. Um, little small dings or whatever you could fill up. Uh, and it's also used as an adhesive. Um, when I go to lay on the carbon fiber, the very first layer, every edge is going to get an adhesive. This way, it sticks real good. This top side here, where I had to uh, do a little putty and then I had to primer it, that's going to get a little adhesive there because that's going to get a lot more wear. Um, any folded over edges. So I'm going to have some edges on the inside here that fold over. So I'm going to put a little bit of adhesive on the inside edge. All the corners, I'm going to put some adhesive. So when I go to vacuum bag everything and it pulls it into the corner, it's going to pull into that adhesive and uh, everything should stay good. The shape's pretty wicked, huh guys? What do you think? It's going to look nice when it's done, right? Hopefully when they're done, I can start cranking some out. If you guys want to purchase some, we'll purchase some. And uh, I'm going to be looking to give one away as well. Um, I can easily, this isn't your run of the mill uh, retail board. This is a handcrafted custom electric skateboard deck. A lot more than your typical, uh, say, I, I don't even know what carbon fiber decks are out there that you can buy for your DIY. If you guys have good sources, I know there's like a major manufacturer of carbon fiber skateboard decks that I saw people are using the carbon fiber uh, covers. You know, they get those electric covers and they put it over and, and it looks really nice. It's all, I mean, that looks great. Their decks are running about 350 bucks. Um, so, I don't know. Let me guys know what you think. Anyway, Joe Kaiser, that's all I got for today. Bye. Bye. And I'll keep it.